Here we go again. <clears throat> yeah, that's back back to the karma thing. Karma, whatever part to. Yeah, that's just like cutting. You no, know, you could look at it like that. It's like you hanging out with the same people all the time. You motherfuckers ain't getting no place. The same motherfuckers you sitting with getting high, doing the same old dumb ass shit, talking the same old thing. You're not getting anywhere. You're not going no place. That's what karma is. Talking loud, ain't saying nothing. You know, I call it busy doing nothing. Like how a lot of people are. Like instead of saying, you know, they ain't got no hobbies, they ain't got no job, they ain't got shit, but they busy doing nothing. But they play like they busy. That's karma. Okay? You're not getting anywhere. It's a universal law. That's like my wife. You see? When she first started off her little journey, she was a single girl, woman. And she had got pregnant by a bum ass nigga that, you know, tricked her out of her drawers. You know? And they come to find out that she can't really take care of kids. She don't know how, she doesn't want to. And she can't take the pressure and the pressures of life and the expectations of life. You know, she flunked the way she feels. And she's just realizing now that it's not all about that. You know? That's what she's learning now. And she's fucking 40. And we've been married for 15 years. And she's just realizing this now. You know, carrying all of that shit from yesterday. And the day before. And last year. Last month. Last year. Year before last. Two years ago. Five years ago. Whatever. You can't keep living there. That's back to that karma thing. The past is some shit that already happened. And if you sit down and let the past sit back <clears throat> by yourself, you let the past take over your mind. Yes, it could become more real than present time, than the present, if you let it. And you know the people I'm talking about. You got people that are still living, in, you know, like flower children. You know, you got people that are still living in a different era. <laughs> Same people from back in the day. Because they mind, is, they stuck on stupid. Okay, they stuck in the past. And they always will be hippies, flower children. They're going to wear all of that same clothes, talking the same slang. You know, <laughs> that's fucking stupid. You know, and that's that. All that's gonna do is make you remember the same old fucked up memories, the fucked up relationships. You're gonna be living that. That's how you get damaged. You gotta try to fix that. Then you got the people talking about, oh, living the now. Get the fuck out of here, man. Living the now. Live for the moment. Get the fuck out of here. You talking about? You better plan for the future. That's what you got to do. It's like people don't start thinking about that shit until they start thinking about their mortality. <laughs> and you'll be planning then. People think it's morbid to talk about it. What are you going to talk about? Shit you're going to do? You were talking about shit you should have did fucking 40, 50 fucking years ago? Get the fuck out of here. You better be planning for your funeral and who you're going to give your stuff to. That's what, the old, that's what these old motherfuckers is thinking walking around out here. Who do you think they're thinking about? They're thinking about who they're going to give their shit stuff to. They shit to. How they gonna do, that's if they got anything. You got some people that say they ain't leaving shit behind. It's like, don't look for nothing from me. Because I ain't leaving me all shit. You got people like that. My wife will get my social security. That's how that shit will work. She's got enough time, man. 
And if you get, if the she, if your wife gets remarried, she and she don't get shit. So, she, so the chick got to be very careful. They got to be very careful who you fuck with. Okay, because you got to be with a guy more than ten years, married to a person more than ten years, in this country, on paper. To even be eligible. Now, if a woman's now, if your wife is disabled, she could collect money at early as fifty. She could collect her money early as fifty years of age. And she could collect money if she's not disabled. She could collect money in some cases like as early as sixty. But she has to reach that age, and plus, she has to stay alive. That's how that shit works. She has to stay alive. Yeah. She has to stay alive to collect Social Security. If she doesn't stay alive, she ain't going to be collecting no Social Security if she died before you. Good morning. Yeah, she died before you. She ain't collecting no Social Security. Your Social Security. That's how I be telling my wife. I'm 20 years older than my wife. And we've been married 15 years. And I told her. I said, you out, you partying and doing everything like you fucking a teenager or some shit. How long do you think that shit's going to last, man? Because you'll be dead before me. And she stays sick and stay in bad moods. And, you know... And now she's finally accepting the fact that since this COVID thing coming around, they throwing them, this is, she lives in Canada now. They throwing them extra money. You understand what I'm saying? And like I said, of course you got a little stupid ass, trick ass motherfuckers that's gonna throw some money here and there. Throw a bone here and there. That's where all that, that's where that stuff comes in at. They don't throw her a bone here and there. But what people don't realize is that once a woman, once a woman, takes what you give her, she ain't thinking about your ass. You ain't no good to her no more. Once you get that money, cash that check, pick up that money, you put that money in her hand, and she goes one way, you go the other way, or she hangs up the phone, however it works out. You fucking, you're a dummy. <laughs> you're a fucking dummy, is what you are. If that's how you're living, and you let bitches play with your man pride and all that kind of stuff, you're weak. You know, if you're giving my wife money, you're an idiot. <laughs> For real. You're a fucking idiot if you're giving someone's wife money. And just like I told my wife, that only means a few things. He's a dummy, or you tricking. And I said, you up in Canada, ain't shit up there, so that means that when a motherfucker comes through, he's getting his, you're you gonna get on your knees. That's how that works. Been there, done that. That's how that works. You're getting butt ass. And if he's a dirtbag ass guy, he's gonna make you do all kind of dirty shit. You're not his wife. <laughs> he don't give a fuck. So you do all kind of dirty shit for some change. So that's all the few hundred dollars is, is some change. That ain't no fucking money. You know, and I don't care if we give you a few hundred dollars every week or every month. If you got to exchange fluids, you're a scumbag. And you got kids and you're a mom that's getting disability, taken care of already. You're going to do all that shit for, um, you know, for some cigarettes and alcohol and some, and a couple of meals and some food or something, something. There's no need for that. <laughs> There's no need to um <laughs> to dish yourself. 
Your kids see it. Your mother see it. Your friends know what you do. Your uh, neighbors are going to see it. The people who you go get the money from, they know what you're doing. People you pick up the money from, they're looking at you like they know what you're doing. And I try to tell them. Just like now, uh, since I've been talking with my daughter, she's told me that, uh, yeah, like mom got turned back because she, cause she came here one time, she got sick fucking with some dude. She's got this stomach problem. She has mental issues, stomach problems, pussy problems, you know. I call it female trouble, all kind of female trouble, hormone problems, menopause, bullshit, all this crazy ass shit. And I'm like, that's better him than me. Yeah, that's better him than me. That's for so any. I said that's great. I said because my daughter's not there. I said I'm glad my daughter's not there. So to me, it's just like she just moved back to try some niggas. And she's got, you know, women know how to play on people's sympathy, yada, yada. Some niggas are weak like that. But I told her, like, who wants a sick chick, man? Nobody wants a sick bitch that they got to take care of. You got mental and health problems, physical health, and you got psychological problems. They took your kids away. Your mother and father raised your first kid. Why you was living like a fucking animal. <laughs> In an apartment that the government was supplying you temporarily. You took advantage of that. And lived like a dog. Until you hooked up with the wrong guy and he started beating you up. Kicking her in the ass, taking her money. You understand? Had her doing whatever she needed to get money. And that's when I came along. Because she had gotten into a bad car accident with this guy. I think the white boy's trying to kill her. Because the car got ran in on the passenger side. And she got pinned in there. And fucked her hips up. Fractured her shit. You know, fucked her up. She got some money out of that. She got some money out of that. And then that dude came around looking for the money. And she was getting some kind of welfare for the kid. This is before my daughter was born. She was getting some kind of welfare for the kid. Um, they was paying the rent, paying the bills. They was paying for everything. She just hooked up with a crazy drug addict guy. And like, she ain't no angel. She was getting high and doing everything else just like him. Partying. Party people. That's what party people do. And it turns bad when the money runs out. As usual. And uh, here I come along, Captain Saverho, and we started talking online. We started talking, and she still was going out clubbing and all. I said that's some sad shit when the bitch got to go to the club <laughs> to look for a man. While your mother and father babysits your baby. And you still out trying to <laughs> talk about that's a good time. Who told you that's a good time? I said, oh, Hollywood, <laughs> TV, the media tell you that's a good time. Well, they lied to you. <laughs> and I want all you all to understand. They lied to you. all It's not a good time. It's how they shorten your life. And how they keep you from being a threat to their fucking empire. By making you a zombie dope fiend. Drunk, pothead, crackhead, cokehead, whatever it is. Whatever you hooked on. Sex addict, venereal diseases, HIV, whatever. Because all that comes together. And that's what you become. A hypersexual drug addict. Yeah, you can have a job too. 
doesn't matter. You fell for the fucking, you fell for the game. You fell for the con. And they sit back on top. Not the president and all the presidents of men. Not that. The true rulers. The, the people who the president worked for. The people who the president speaks for. <laughs> Those people. They're people, you know. Like me and you. That's if they figured out a way to brain fuck you. To make you think of getting somewhere. Then every time you turn around, you're no place. And you're never going to be no place. Trust me. You're never going to be anywhere. What? A place to live? Right? Y'all got a place to live, right? Got a place to eat. You got food in, food in your house? Yeah, everybody got a little food in your house. You got heat and water and stuff like that? Yeah, you, that comes with the property. You know, your bills to pay for that? Yeah, they got ways that they can help with your bills and pay for your stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a car? Yeah, some of us got a car. Some of us aren't interested in driving. Some of us are interested in driving. Okay? That's how that goes. No big deal. It's still the same basic stuff, man. It's still the same basic stuff. You understand? You got a woman? Eh, maybe not. Your woman, you got a man? Eh, maybe not. There's a lot of prospects. You having sex with them? Yeah, you probably are. Yeah, you're a whore. But more than likely, you're a single female with an apartment, a little bullshit, tough part-time job with no benefits. Maybe even a college degree, no job, living with your parents, underneath some guy's thumb. You know, it's all the same stuff. You're not going to get out of that. You're not going to have more. Like I said, it's back to the karma stuff again. It's karma. And when you get 50 years old, it's going to be the same thing that you're doing if you're 21 years old. You put yourself in those precarious situations. Like my, my daughter's at the, uh, with the foster care people. She's been there since uh, like November of 2015. And, um, and I pleaded with my wife, send her back to the States. It's not going to work out any kind of way. What you think, that I'm going to send you money? And she's not in that household? I said, I'll help you here and there. But I'm not sending you no money like, like if she was there. And I know if I send you money, you're not going to give her any. My wife is too busy saying, oh, she lives better than I do where she's at. They don't have anything to do with the money I send for her. Good morning. That has nothing to do with the money that I send for her. You understand? The same with the money that, you know, niggas send her. Or whatever. You know, what, she's on this, she doesn't even give any of that money to her daughter. And I said, why don't you give me some of that money that you took for? I don't know why you always think so bad about me. And whatever, whatever, whatever. Of course, normally, <laughs> normally, men don't be sending bitches the money through Western Union. For no reason. But just because they're nice guys. That, that really normally doesn't happen. So it's more than that. And we all know that once you get the pussy, you know, that contract is over once you bust a nut. <laughs> That's a temporary contract. You don't try to sit back and try to tell me that um, someone's sending you something. And you're not doing anything. That's why my boy used to do going that passed away that go to go to uh, Dominican Republic all the time. My boy Flip. He tried to get me to do that shit. They're sending these poor ass, these poor ass bitches money 
so that when I do get down to PDR, you know, they be ready to get on their knees. I don't want no bitches like that. That's taking advantage of the poverty stricken people. I said, you're acting like you're doing something real good. Yeah, man, all you gotta do is get them hoes. He said, I ain't giving no home on no bitch more than forty dollars. <laughs> yeah. I ain't giving no bitch no more than forty dollars. Is what he says. I used to say. So I'm gonna go down in there. Just to get off. On some bitches that everybody's getting they box off on. No thanks. <laughs> no thank you. I don't want none of that. Nope. You can pass that bowl or plate past me to the next person. And that's just what it's like doing. Handing somebody down to play this different fucking skeet in there. Like Vikings be <laughs> spitting and blowing their nose in the cup. <laughs> and they all pass it around and they t all take a swallow of it. <laughs> that's nastier than that. I ain't with that. So, then women wonder why. Oh, why you talk so bad about, you know, I said, I ain't talking bad about you. It's life, man. It's keeping it 100. You know? And now she's seeing that it wasn't all cracked up to what it was. Talking all that bullshit. Oh, we getting married. We going to get married in San Francisco in the vineyard. I'm going to move there. I'm going to put my stuff in storage. And I'm going to give it a try. And I say, you dummy, you got to get divorced first. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I said, I know you delusional. You got to get divorced first. That has to go through. Okay. You could have that. And I told her, I said, I ain't fucking you no more. The fuck I want that for? You really think it's like that? I would the same way I didn't touch none of them other bitches that had my children. Now I would do the same thing to you. The fuck I want you for? Knowing that you're not 20 years old. You're fucking 40. Your shit's all beat up. You're old. Older. You know, you're white. You've been hit the wall. Like 10 fucking years, hit the wall when I first met you. She was like, she was at the wall at 25. So we talking 15 years ago. Ain't no way, that shit's getting better. That shit falls apart each and every fucking day. Each and every week, every month, that shit's falling apart. And if you're still getting high, smoking, drinking, drugging and bugging, not sleeping, taking all these medications, you know, hormones and all this crazy shit, man. How long you think you're going to live off of that shit, man? You're not going to live a full life. Every other day you're sick. You know, it's like for her to feel good one day, it's like, you know, somebody hitting the home run. A grand slam for her to feel good one day. It's like hitting a half court basketball shot with one second, the winning bucket with one second left in the game. It's a manic, that's a manic thing. You know, you feel on top of the world one minute, and the next day you're sad as fuck. You don't want to talk to nobody, you don't want to see nobody. That's mania, mania. That's what that is. And uh, yeah, but she already know the game. She been through the game before she met me. And I knew what she was about. I never let her cut loose any of her tricks and all that stuff. I know what I was getting into. She was good for a couple of years. She tried. But you can't make a whole housewife, you know? 
You really can't make any woman your uh, wife. Unless it's for certain types of reasons, like with me and her. This is basically, it's for like financial reasons. And she's not bad looking. She got a nice shape and all that and everything. She's just older now. You know? She had a kid. And she was sick. When I met her, she had just came out of a fucking, um, fucking crazy house, man. When I met her. Guy was driving her crazy. He was beating her ass. Driving her fucking nuts. And she was had postpartum from the first child. So her mother and her father was watching that kid most of the time. While she's in her own apartment fucking off. So she wanted to get back to that. And that's what she did. She let her oldest daughter move in. You know, stay with the grandmother, which is down the hall. So that she could have... Then my little girl was there with her. And my little girl... The little bossy little thing. And that little... Spunky little... Spunky and... Wild child. <laughs> Telling mama like it is, man. You understand? Telling mama like it is, man. Yeah, you're telling mom like it is, man. Yeah, telling her mother like it is. And telling her mother like it is and keeping it real funky with her, man. She wasn't liking those niggas that was coming over there. You know, all that tricking and all that bullshit going on. <sighs> Calling it the way she see it. You know, outspoken, wild, loud, for real. My little girl, I'm not giving a fuck. She's 13 now. Back then she was eight, eight and under. So for five years, she grew up and seen what was going on. And start calling her mother on shit. Her mother's cursing her out like she's a grown up. Policemen, police are coming over. Disturbing the peace, disturbing the household. Mother's trying to blame the kid for everything. So you can't blame a five-year-old. Are you fucking retarded? You can't blame a five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old for disturbing the peace. That means you ain't got no control over your home. That means, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing that you got a fucking six-year-old running around the place cursing like a fucking sailor? The fuck are you doing? She was doing the same thing when she was doing when she was here. When I was at work, online and on the phone, talking with niggas. Instead of saying, fuck these niggas, whatever. Let me take care of my baby. I got a newborn. I got a new husband. My first husband. Let me leave that bullshit chat life, social media life behind. You know. And be a real mother and be a real woman. A respectable Mom and fucking wife. She couldn't do that. It's too hard. Because once you, um, you get corrupt like that, you fuck for the rest of your life. Now, if you guys want to deal with headaches and mania and, uh, I'm not going to say bipolar. I ain't going to say schizophrenic. I'm going to say borderline personality disorder and all of this narcissistic behavior you talking all this grandiose bullshit about other people that don't give a fuck about you I don't want I, tell, I told her a long time ago I don't want to hear about what the next motherfucker got or what he says he has you know what will make me happy and make me smile for motherfucker you can show me a bank book or a bank statement where niggas put money in the bank with just your name on it. Now we talking. Other than that, you just talking a bunch of delusional shit, man. Come on, man. I'm too old for that. You know, I'm too old for that to listen to that bullshit. You know. My first children's mother got uh got over on her brother-in-law. Her oldest sisters. So you talking about a nigga getting crossed up. Come on. She had two kids with her brother-in-law from her older sister. 
turned Muslim because they couldn't legally get married because the man was legally married already. And he had like five wives. And he got them all thinking that they're the principal wife. That's his pimp game. And uh, yeah, he died all of a sudden. He ain't never thought he was gonna die. She had made that nigga sign over everything. His uh, life insurance, well, his son. Him, his son, and I think his oldest daughter, three of them. That, all that shit got split three ways. He didn't have anything else. He just had the shit for his job. That's all. The shit from his job and some light in the life insurance policy and um, his uh, pension stuff. Because you could sign your pension to any fucking body. And life insurance, you can get no down on anyone as long as they agree to what's going on. And that's basically what happened. So she got out of there all this time, disrespecting herself, disrespecting her mother. You understand? Disrespecting her children. Who are my children? And um, and she didn't stop hoeing. She hoeing with the guy. She's home. She brought that. You know, she's in front of her mother with the shit, and her sister in the family. Like this is my man now. Her mother used to tell me. She says. They not no, she said, look at them. They not no more married than me and you. <laughs> That's what her mother used to tell me. I said, I know that, Ma. Don't worry, I'm, I'm okay. And that's when I was doing the wrong thing. But I got that, I'll tell you guys, I got that city job working with the electrical department, working with track and equipment for the New York City Transit Authority. The trains on the ground. Yeah, the minute I got that job, that's when they, they came out of the, uh, they came out. That's when they came out of the closet. <laughs> she was hitting me all the time. That's when they came out of the closet. So that was the plan. You got two kids with the nigga, right? You got two kids with the nigga. You know, get paid. That's uh, 25%. It's not bad in New York. 17% for one, and it's like 25% for two kids of your salary. That's not bad. And meanwhile, she's still playing the welfare game, getting what she can. And he's just like, from what I've seen, all he was doing was paying the rent. That's what he was doing paying the rent and I think they had a couple of houses paying the mortgage and paying the rent <laughs> and then they got her pregnant two times from what I know and me and her, the moms always was cool she just passed away that's the one I'm telling y'all about the one that died from cancer she just passed away like four years ago she passed away like four years ago she passed away bad she went out bad man yeah, she went out bad. Trust me. That shit tore her ass up. She suffered. And she put in all that time and all that work for um two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. $275,000 with four kids and herself. You went through all that fucking shame and um, embarrassment and shame your family, shame your children, shame our children, you know, try to brainwash them for whatever. And that guy, both of them dropped dead. He dropped dead from like a heart attack. And she passed away miserably. Cancer ate through her chest, ate her tit off, it went under her arm, swole up on lymph nodes under the arm, like eggs under her armpit. Then that shit spread across her back. 
and just ate her alive, man. She must have weighed two pounds when she died, man. You know? And that's sad. But that's the life she lived. It was like my wife. You know, I've been married one time, that's it. I didn't even marry my first children's mother. I didn't marry my second children's mother either. She was a fucking street urchin. There's no fucking other way to put it. She was a fucking street urchin. That was everybody's woman. She was the whole one I met her. Now it's happened to me to dumbass to shack her up. My guys gassed me up. Yeah, she could work for you, man. Let her hold the packages. She could drop shit off for you. Put that bitch to work. All she gotta do is gain a little bit of weight and she'd be straight. Yeah, she's a she had the best body of any woman that I ever had. Yeah, I can say that's my girl, my my woman. Yeah. We have a 29-year-old. Yeah. That's Denise. Oh, the first one name is Darlene. This one name is Denise. Yeah. Man, our baby was born. She came to me. Some guy came to my spot knocking on the door. He had a bag full of jewelry. He says, you had a girl and handed me the bag. I said, what's this? He said, look, I looked inside, I said, damn, that's her jewelry. I was at least she didn't fucking sell the shit like she did the other time. <laughs> but she didn't actually sell it. I sent it to the pawn shop to get it out. Once we got back on, cause we took a bad hit. and lost almost everything. We had to build back up. So, you know, that's street stuff. So you show the streets that you're getting back on, and they look and say, damn, they got the same old jewelry on that they had before they got in trouble. You know, that type of stuff. And, uh, shit was weird. Here go this little lady, she's always out. I never really met her. She, she's a runner. This one right here. You may see her crossing the street. She's a runner. She runs walks. I don't want to talk about her now. Yeah, and uh, I said to myself, I said, that's crazy. See, she up there running, see? I said, that's crazy, man. You run across all these different people. I figured if I go to another country, that shit would change. I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on.